What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. This is episode 101. So, yes, we've we've hit our milestone of 100. We're racing on uh, past 100. This is episode 101. And this is a special interview episode. And I'm going to be interviewing our guest, uh, Kevin Isaac. Um, he's wrestled for quite a few promotions around the UK, in particular CPW in Coventry, and uh, most notably Independent Wrestling Elite, IWE UK over in Essex. But we'll be talking to Kevin very, very soon. Uh, but for all of that, just one plug I want to throw out there to all of my listeners, and that's if you haven't done so already, go and check out our website, wrestlingwithjohners.com. That's wrestlingwithjohners.com, where you've got a full archive of podcasts. We've got a special interview section, so if you want to check out interviews only, you can go there and, and check out the various interviews we've done over the last couple of years. We got a, a section up there on uh, various articles that have been done by our team of writers, uh, daily news updates, our merchandise link, and so much more. So please go and check it out. I can't recommend it enough. That's wrestlingwithjohners.com. So Wrestling With Jonas all in one place on our brand new websites. Uh, but uh, this is the third in our series of interviews in partnership with IWE UK over in Essex to help shine a bit of a light on uh, some, of, just some of their excellent up-and-coming wrestling talent um, who are already making waves, let's be honest, on the UK indie wrestling scene. So uh, my next interview is uh, in partnership with IWE, is with Kevin Isaac. So good afternoon, Kevin. How are you, sir? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm really, really happy to have you on board. I'm, I'm feeling great. Oh, cheers, and, mate. And uh, really it's, great it's to great have to you be on board. Room one. It's great to be on Room 101. Episode one. Yes, it feels absolutely. Like room <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of is. It does have that feel, and I'm sure there'll be yeah. a lot, lots of things that uh, you, you kind of you, you want to talk about, and maybe don't want to talk about. We we'll see how the interview progresses. But uh, uh, we spoke a little bit off air, Kevin, and uh, hot off the heels of a, a match last night with CPW. And uh, you, how are you feeling after last night's match? Uh, are you sore? Are you okay? You, you said off air that you don't often sleep very well after after a match. But uh, how are you today, the, the night after the uh, the day before? I mean, I've got the usual sort of wrestler aches, um, which you get after pretty much every show. But nothing nothing too bad. Um, yeah, it's mostly the lack of sleep that gets me after a show. Because you're kind of buzzed until about two in the morning. Um, yeah. And then sort of with my day job in the week, I'm awake early. So I was up at seven this morning. I didn't get asleep until maybe about half one, two o'clock. Yeah. So if anything else, I'm just a little bit tired. But other than that, it was pretty nice. Um, it was my first show of the year yesterday. Um, so it was cool to get back out there and um, sort of break off a little bit of the old, uh, the old Christmas rust and of get course. ready on for the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was against uh, a wrestler that you know quite well in the name of, by the name of Morris. And uh, yeah, you, Morris, you, you, you've seen him in, in the ring one or two times before. Uh, but uh, how did the match go last night? I don't know the result. Uh, you can spoil it for us if you want to. But was it a good match? Yeah. Did you enjoy the match? Yeah, I mean, um, Morris is is sort of one of their um, one of their homegrown talents. Uh, yes. He's been there for for a long time. He's a young lad, uh, but really strong. Um, he's got cardio for days. Like he's an absolute cardio machine. Um, it was a good match, you know, he, he hits really hard, which is nice. Um, I like being hit quite hard. Uh, so, you know, you give it as good as you get, really. Um, but no, it was a really good match. The crowd are really hot. He's really over um, with the crowd. Like, he's one of those top baby faces uh, yeah. up there. So it was, it was really nice to be in front of that nice, hot crowd. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I lost by count out, um, but then I beat him up afterwards. So that's always a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, good, good, yeah. a bit of payback in, but uh, Absolutely. No, thanks, for giving us, thanks for giving us the update on that, but uh, kind of skipping all the way back now to when you first became a, a fan of pro wrestling then, Kevin, so can you remember, uh, I mean, did, have you always been into pro wrestling, did you get into pro wrestling from an early age, can you remember roughly around the time when you got into pro wrestling and kind of what, what drew you in as, a, as an early or young pro wrestling fan? So my, um, I got into wrestling through my cousins uh, who were who were huge wrestling fans. I don't remember um, really a time before uh, before I was a fan of wrestling at all. Yeah. Uh, so from from very very young, I'd say from maybe four or five, we we always had like the old um, uh, Coliseum video, uh, mm. WWF pay per views. So I remember watching Silver Vision. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching like. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, Bobby Heenan coming out on the back of the camel at WrestleMania 9. I remember watching that on video. Uh, I remember, like, 
Warrior and Hogan were very early memories. Sure. So and then and then when I really grew into my fandom was around like the turn of the like the Attitude Era was yeah. was. And I was a young kid, so really I shouldn't have been watching all that much. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, well, I was about sort of, because I, I was born in 1990. So yeah. around seven, eight years old is when Austin, The Rock, Triple H, DX at their most, you know, uh, at their most um, too hot for TV, so to speak, sure. to, use a 90s, to use a 90s reference. PG-13. Uh, yeah, very <laughs> well. Almost, almost our raid in some circumstances. Well, in, you know? in some, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So yes, yeah, so we had that, and um, so I'd get like WWF tapes from uh, from my cousins who'd tape like Raw on a Monday, and and we'd watch it together. Um, but at home, I remember watching uh, WCW. So I always used to tape Nitro at home, and we'd swap Nitro and Raw um, because on our Sky subscription at home, uh, we didn't have Sky Sports, but obviously we had. Cartoon Network, which used to flip over into TNT, so we always used to get Nitro on a Monday night. Um, so it was quite nice having those two contrasting things growing up. There was always lots of wrestling going on. Mm, yeah, I, I grew up in a very similar time. And uh, can you remember some of your your favourite wrestlers growing up? Who did you kind of, you know, idolise watching as as a youngster? You mentioned that you were, you know, seven or eight when you really started getting into it around the Attitude Era. But so, uh, were there any wrestlers that kind of jumped out of your TV screen at the time that you absolutely loved and had to watch on a weekly basis? Yeah, so it was um, with with WWF at the time. It was it was Austin. It was The Rock, mm-hmm. um, The Undertaker. I remember going to an event. Uh, it, it was mayhem in Manchester, I think, in '97, and being yeah. absolutely terrified of Kane. That if we shouted at him, I was terrified <laughs> he was going to come and get us. That's like how much that dude scared me. Um, and then when I started watching WCW, it was Goldberg, and um, and then on the undercard, I remember looking at guys like Benoit and Jericho. Uh, I know Benoit is a bit of a dirty word, but his in-ring talents were second to none. Yeah, um, totally. But yeah, yeah, Benoit, Jericho, Perry Saturn. Um, I was just absolutely fascinated by their athletic ability. It was just incredible to watch, especially when you're a young kid. These guys are all superheroes, you know. So it was it was always them for me. Yeah. And then so uh, we spoke a little bit about uh, off air that uh, you were born originally in Belgium. Now, part, yeah. of my li- part of my line of questioning was going to be what was it like growing up a wrestling fan in Belgium? But you said to me that you, you moved over to the UK at a very young age. So you really your fandom kind of began in the UK and, and has continued in the UK. But uh, do you know much about the is there much of a pro wrestling scene in Belgium from what you know? I mean, have you still got friends and family over there? They obviously know you're a pro wrestler. Is there much of a scene over in Belgium at the moment? So my parents were both British, um, so they met over in Belgium. Uh, so okay. moving moving back to the UK was never that much of a problem. Uh, my mum still has friends mm. in Belgium, but I have no ties over there really. Um, from what I understand, there's a few of my peers now on the on the scene who are going over to Belgium for shows. Um, there's a company uh, whose name escaped me. I think it's PWA. I want to say, but okay. I, I don't quote me on that. They have an affiliation with a Midlands based promotion. Um, and so a lot of their talent are kind of doing um, like a cross promotion. So they go over to Belgium and work a little bit and then some of their talent come over and, and do some of their shows. Um, so if I could get in over there, that'd be really cool to say that I'd be able to go and do a show sort of where I was born. That'd be a lovely yeah. thing to, yeah. to add to the list uh, yeah, for absolutely. down the line. But um, in terms of that, I don't, I, in terms of that, I don't really know the wider scene. Uh, mm-hmm. I've only seen like one, maybe two. Yeah, but like I say, something to add to the bucket list maybe to get over there and uh, wrestle in the country. Yeah, of where course. Born, but that would be pretty cool. But uh, what was your thoughts on the current uh, kind of wrestling landscape? You obviously, you know, are, are very familiar on the UK indie scene. Um, but uh, are you a fan of the more mainstream products? What sort of uh, wrestling do you like to watch, whether it be you know live in person or maybe on the tv what kind of floats your boat nowadays regarding the current pro wrestling scene then kevin so i mean i like all kinds of wrestling this is what i say to everyone um because i know i get a lot of people who send me spots who do think it's ridiculous but i like everything you know i like um i like looking at old chikara where it's really silly Uh, and i like when wwe do their stuff really well because they do what they do better than anybody and which is why they're the biggest wrestling company in the world 
Um, I tend to stick with only a couple because of you know just time restraints in the week and and availability. Um, so I watch I watch Dynamite every week. I watch NWA Power every week, and I keep up to date with what's going on in NXT and WWE. Um, if I can get to shows, I like going to um, I like going to Fight Club in Wolverhampton. Yeah. That's always a really great night out. Uh, I've been to Rev Pro a couple of times, um, and anytime New Japan come over and have to get a ticket because it's just seeing new japan pro wrestling live is one of the best things for a wrestling fan because it's so everything seems so real it's one of those that you never you have an idea as to where everything's going but they could turn it on its head and it makes complete sense it, yeah. it's just if, for me it's the best all-round product um that's going at the minute but i don't watch everything they put out i keep up to date but i have to go and see them live yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's obvious and we spoke off air again about, uh, you know, you're obviously very passionate about uh, the Japanese products and New Japan in particular. And it sounds like mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the promotion that really excites you anyway. But uh, let's talk about when you, you kind of first had the desire to maybe get into pro wrestling yourself then, Kevin. So w- at what age? So you said that you, you really started getting into wrestling around the, the mid to late 90s. At what age did you kind of think, yeah, I, I kind of want to do this and I want to do, do this as a career and then finally find a, a wrestling school or start training? When did all that come about then, Kevin? Well, it always seemed like, because um, I mean, I grew up in the Northeast and and the Northeast is, um, it's a lovely place to live and a lovely place to grow up, but it, it feels quite shut off from a lot of things um, because it's, while it's very welcoming, it's also very insular. Um, or it certainly was when I was growing up anyway. Um, and so it, we never really knew of anywhere to train until there was um, an advert in the Sunland Echo for a training school opening at the, at the Leisure Center in Sunland, uh, just outside the bridges. I don't know if it's there anymore. Uh, I haven't been to Sunland in a while. Um, but it was always on a Sunday, and I used to go with my cousins. Um, and, and, you know, you go and you, you try and test it out. It was maybe 12 I want to say 12. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we, I'd just go every week and just loved it and loved it and loved it. Um, they also ran, uh, training sessions in, I think it was Jarrah or Gated. Um, and funny enough, it was the school where Pac was trained. So that was always pretty nice to say that, mm. um, I met him once, not that he would ever remember who I was, but I remember, <laughs> I, I remember, um, I remember seeing this guy who was just doing these crazy things off the top rope. And I was just like, man, I'm never going to be able to do that. I've got to find another way of, uh, of working. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that guy turned out to be Pac. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how long were you training for? So, I mean, you started training at a very young age. Did you say 12 or 13? You kind of uh, got yeah. involved? Yeah, it was about 12 or 13. So I trained there for maybe um, maybe a year or two. Um, and then I had some family trouble. Unfortunately, my father passed away when I was 13. Um, and so like my life got upended a little bit. Um, and then I, you know, I was just at school, so I stuck out of school and, and kind of didn't wrestle. And then, um, we relocated because my stepdad, uh, his, his job got moved. Uh, and so we moved to rugby in the Midlands. And I remember him saying, uh, he came home with the rugby advertiser and he was like, oh, they have a wrestling promotion here. They they have training. Are you, are you, do you still want to do it? And I'm like, I don't know, like everything's a little bit up in the air. But I got there and we went to a show sort of uh, when we moved down here and I was hooked again. Uh, and I started maybe a week later and that was with uh, the Wrestling Association of Rugby back in 2006. So it'll have been August 2006 when I, when I retrained. And I stupidly told them I'd done it before. And they, on the first training session, uh, Andrew, one of the trainers, because it was ran by three brothers. Uh, it was Andrew, Simon, and Stuart. Stuart's still wrestling under the name The Judge. But uh, Andrew and Simon aren't wrestling anymore. And um, yeah, he just made me bump until I threw up. Just continuously bump, 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 bump. And I just threw up. And they went, ah, oh, he's never coming back. He's never coming back. And then the next week I came back and they're like, oh, OK, maybe maybe we can do something. And uh, so, yeah, so that's when I got back into it then. And I made my debut with them, I want to say seven months later. So, again, it was pretty quick, all in all. Um, yeah, February 2007. So it was about seven, eight months later. 
Yeah, and uh, I mean, you've obviously described about the, the training process and how they tried to break you in on your first session uh, back in uh, when you first started training again. But uh, can you think, can you remember back to your first match? I mean, can you remember who it was against and how it went? And, uh, you know, was it daunting before you kind of started the match? And, uh, you know, how were you feeling you know, when it when it was ended, when it was all said and done? Kind of tell us about that experience of your first match. Yeah, so I mean, it, it it was all a bit of a blur. I mean, luckily, I've got the match on YouTube um, because uh, Andrew recorded everything and he would always put it up there. So Spin would record everything. I actually had my first match against him um, because he was one of the most experienced. He'd been doing it for so long. Yeah. He'd be able to carry me through. Um, and I remember him putting the match together and we were putting this match together for, I want to say, about six weeks uh, just to get me used to uh, remembering spots, running spots. Um, calling, feeding, making sure I could take all of his offense, making sure um, the stuff that I wanted to do wasn't dangerous, yeah. and that I could do it safely, and he wouldn't be he wouldn't be hurt, and I'd be able to protect him. And um, yeah, I remember the day of. I was really nervous, really, really nervous. Um, and then going out, I was just kind of you just lose yourself a little bit. Every wrestler will tell you this. The first time you go out or you, you just kind of get lost in the haze of everything. And then you come back and you go, that was quick. That was really quick. We're, we're at the finish. Oh, we're done. Oh, cool. I've just been building up for six weeks to this. And, <laughs> and it's done. Okay, when's the next one? Let's go. Let's go again. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's the best drug. Absolutely the best drug. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, watching the match back, it's not the biggest heap of shit I've ever seen, which is quite nice. Uh, I had a very good teacher to help sort of guide me through that process. So I'm very, very good. thankful for that. Good, good. And uh, no looking back after that, I'm sure. But uh, what, what, what was your, your, your name back then? Because you, you obviously weren't Kevin Isaac uh, back then. No. Uh, can you remember what, what, was your, what was your kind of uh, your character name, your rest name uh, back when you made your debut? Can you remember? Yeah, it was really cringe, mate. It was really cringe. I, most, uh, most of them are. The yeah, first, first names are yeah, pretty Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, um, I, uh, I, I'm really into heavy metal. It's one of my big things, and I was always into that kind of aesthetic. So I was like, had this character um, based on Raven, really. So yeah. we cut off like um, cut off cargo shorts and, and a singlet underneath, and like long black boots. And um, one of the guys came up with the name Dante for me. I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll just go with that. And then one of the guys um, who ran it said, oh, and you can be billed from the deepest corners of your own mind. And I was like, please don't do that. That's awful. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever heard. And then they gave, it, they gave it to the ring announcer and he said it. And I was like, oh, for God's sake, <laughs> this is awful. Okay. This is going to come back. To, <laughs> this is going to come back to haunt me. And funnily enough. Here we are in 2020, it and it is, has come is, back to haunt me. It is, though. I do apologise. This, this is your room 101. <laughs> this, this, yeah, that can go straight down into room 101. <laughs> Pull that bloody yeah, lever. But uh, no, I, sh I showed some of the guys that I work with now, and it's just been, it's been relentless. It's been absolutely relentless. So it's one of those where you wish you hadn't shown them. But uh, yeah. no, it's all, it's all. You don't get too much of. Hopefully you won't get too much of a ribbon when uh, your uh, your uh, wrestlers, your your colleagues can listen back to this podcast. But uh, there we go. Oh, um, oh they'll tell me a new asshole. <laughs> yeah, they'll tell me a new asshole. So, so, so you you kind of made your official debut around about uh, 2007. You were wrestling for about three years up until about 2010. So. I mean, in that in that three year period or so, when did you kind of realise that you were kind of getting quite good at this this wrestling lark and uh, you know really wanted to make a go of it? Kind of uh, obviously you've explained your debut, but how how far into your career uh, from then on did you kind of realise? Yeah, I, I want to give this a good go. I really enjoy this. Make a bit of a, a career of it. See where it takes me. Um, so it was it was about when um, the promotion that trained me decided they wanted to put the heavyweight title on me. Um. And I was like, I was very young as well. I was maybe about 18, 19. Mm. And, um, and, and I always, you always think you're ready for that kind of spot. Um, but when you do it, you, you don't realize how much more effort needs to go into it. Um, and, and it was always nice having that 
like I've I've come here every week. I've proven myself that I can do this, and these people um, trust me enough to carry um, the top of their company. Um, so it was it was that that I realised that it was oh, actually yeah, I can do this. I I always kind of believed that I could, um, but it's always nice to have that bit of validation. Um, it was always nice as well that I'd get little clips from my matches. And it'd be shared in the training group saying, this is how I do this. Watch what Kev does here. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that, that's always great. You know? So I was, I was always very, very pleased for that. Good, good. So he's picking it up quickly. Um, but, uh, and then, I mean, we, we spoke about this briefly off air, but 2010, um, you, you kind of took a bit of a, well, a, a lengthy break from the sport, really, because I mean, yeah. when I was doing my research, a lot of the research only goes back to your kind of more more current uh, wrestling career as Kevin Isaac from 2018. But uh, for that seven or eight year period, you're out the scene for a little while, Kevin. So can you tell us a little bit about what happens that kind of, you know, uh, took you out of the sport? for that long period of time yeah so i mean um first of all i, I started university in 2009 um so that took up a lot of time um and i was working at the weekends as well so i couldn't make training so that was one of the first things that sort of um that sort of stopped me from from being around it all the time um and uh of course when you're a student you've got no money so getting the shows was really difficult and uh yeah, then there was one day I was sitting with a friend of mine uh, on campus and I went to get up off a bench and my back just went, just completely went and I couldn't walk for about a week. And I was like, oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. Um, so I went and got it checked out and it was like muscle spasms around the base of my back and sort of around my spine. I was like, oh no, this isn't good. And sort of while I was in the middle of university, I was just thinking, you know what, I could keep wrestling and risk never being able to walk again, or I could just do what sort of maybe at the right time seemed like the sensible thing to do and complete my studies and try and find something that way. And so I took that option instead. Uh, and, and, I, and I went out for a little bit. Plus, with no access to, um, to anything to watch, I, I just got lost for ideas. I wasn't, you just fall out of love with it. Um, so it was a mixture of injury and just dying passion, um, yeah. which, which took me out of it. Uh, and it, it's just one of those things that happens from time to time. You know, you, 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 you fall in and out of love with certain things that come into your life. And, and that was just a mix of, a couple of different factors that ended up uh, leading to that decision. Mm, absolutely. But, uh, and then come 2018, you, you're back on the scene kind of towards the back end of the year from about September onwards. What, what kind mm. of happened? What, what changed uh, as 2018 was progressing that kind of brought you back into the business or, you know, was it uh, an individual that kind of pulled you to one side and say, you know, do you want to give it another go or just circumstances fell the right way? But so what, what changed that brought you back in eight years later? So it's, um, it started in 2017. My, my pangs for it started coming back. Uh, I remember because I have a um, a friend of mine who's who's a wrestling fanatic, and he'd always send me little bits um, from like really underground stuff, and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's really cool, but you know, I was like, no, nah, no, nah. and I, you always think about it, like you, I always over that period of time, I was like, what if I did this again? And I'm like, no, I'm done with that. I'm going to do something else. No, I'm done with that. But it was, um, I remember watching because somebody sent me the match. And it was uh, Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura from that yeah. takeover. And I just remember watching Nakamura's entrance and going, oh, okay, this is different. Things have changed in this now. Um, and I was just at the end going, yeah, that was great. You know, I forgot wrestling was this great. And then a little bit of time passed and I went to stay with that friend who was living in Bath at the time. And he went, yeah, if you're thinking about getting into wrestling again, because I know you've been talking about it for a while. I was like, yeah. He goes, you need to watch this match or this event. And it was that Wrestle Kingdom with uh, Kenny and Okada, the first one at the top. And there was that ridiculous run of matches up to the top of there. And I was just like, 
wow, this is this is fantastic. Like I have to I have to give this another look. And then and I can't remember which came before or after, but then it was the UK title tournament. And I think it was at the end of the UK title tournament that I went, right, I have to I have to do this again now. Like there is nothing there is nothing more that I want to do other than this. So I found a training school, which was in Coventry. It wasn't a CPW at the time. It was a different one. And, um, and I started, started back there for a little while. Um, and then I heard about CPW and I joined with them in November of 2018, training at their training center. Um, I'd had a couple of matches uh, at the back end of 2018. Uh, one of which was with John, who co-founded uh, IWE with um, Frankie, which is what got me into IWE. But we'll again, we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, but, is that John, um, Johnny Royal that you're referring to? Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Royal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my first match back was with Johnny Royal. And was um, that with uh, PWA uh, Phoenix Wrestling yeah, Association? That, yeah, that was with PWA. That's right. Um, yeah, and I'd, oh, I'd never met him before, and he was on, and we, you know, we messaged a little bit back and forth, and um, and then we got there, and we just had this really great chemistry, and and the match was great, and I was like, right, okay, I can do this again. This this feels this feels fantastic. I was a little heavier than I was when I when I finished. I'd, I'd put on a lot of depression weight, mm. which is something that happens, kids. Um, so that needed addressing, but other than that, the match went really well. So. And, and nobody got hurt, which was which was my main worry. I was like, if I get hurt, then this is going to suck and I'm never going to want to do it again. If I hurt him, I'm going to feel so guilty I'll never be able to step foot in the ring again. Um, but luckily, neither of those things happened. And yeah, yeah it went really well. Uh, was that also around the time when you uh, attended a training seminar with Mark Haskins as well? Because uh, yeah, um, it's... How, how did all that come about, and uh, you know, what, what was your biggest takeaway from uh, having those sessions with uh, Miss, Mr. Haskins? Yeah, so that was that was a bit of a crazy time. It was um, my first match. It was a, it was a few weeks after that was was the training seminar with with Mark. Um, he posted out on his Twitter that he was going to be available around uh, Tipton. He used the, I think it's, he used the lockup that um, Kamikaze used for their uh, for their training, and it was on a Saturday, and I had the Saturday free. And um, he was like, "It's this much for a group session, or it's uh, I think it was sixty pounds for a one on one." And I went, "Right, okay. If I'm going to really test myself, I'll go for the one on one session because I think I'm going to learn the most." Uh, in the one-on-one and it was quite quickly after I'd come back to the sport to be doing something like that but um, having somebody in the ring because we just locked up and just went through loads of uh, different technical aspects of because that's my bread and butter is technical wrestling Um, so he would just put me in something and tell me to find a way out of it and it was finding uh, really unorthodox ways of breaking holds and applying holds. Um, and yeah, we just did that for an hour and he blew me up. My God, that guy's got cardio. It is, I was gassed, absolutely gassed by the end. But it was really nice, have, again, having that validation from somebody who's done so much as he has. Absolutely. To say, you have weaknesses, but... I can see that you can improve on those by doing this, this, and this. So it was really, again, it was mostly just validation to, to say that, you know, I'm not going to go in there and hurt anybody, which is the main thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. just to kind of uh, change the course of questioning now. So let's talk about your, your character, your gimmick, uh, Kevin Isaac. So you obviously returned, as we mentioned in 2018, completely different character, completely different gimmick to when you were wrestling uh, seven or eight years earlier. Um, but, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the character of, of Kevin Isaac, you know, the gimmick um, and, and who is Kevin Isaac for, for any of my listeners that may not have heard too much about you before this podcast okay so it depends um it this is going to sound really weird but it depends where you come and see me uh, it depends which side of my character you get um so when i first started back with phoenix i was very much just a baby face wrestler there wasn't much else there wasn't like any backstory i was just returning to wrestling uh trying to get the crowd on my side 
Um, and I did that for a little while. Uh, and it really wasn't working there anyway. And um, it didn't work at CPW when I moved over there as well. So I had a word with the promoter at CPW and I went, turn me heel. I think I can get more, you know, I think you can get more out of me as a heel. And he went, okay, we'll give it a go. So we had this idea of putting a faction together. And that side of the character has become more of um, almost like a Jim Jones-esque cult leader um, kind of personality. Like, I try to talk more eloquently um, than anybody else. I also think that I'm smarter than everybody else. Um, I use psychology to break opponents down rather than trying to power out of anything, um, which is where technical wrestling really comes in mm. uh, as a heel. Um, you know, so I use holds and uh, joint manipulation to try and psych people out. Um, my promos are all um, are all shot in sort of half light to get that. Um, so you don't see the full face; you only see a little bit. Um, to really try and get that sort of dark, um, silver tongued, yeah, sinister silver tongued, um, cult leader out. Yeah. That, that's, and that's kind of where, and it was, um, I've got to give a massive credit to, to the promoter of CPW for helping me bring that out because he gave me this run with this faction, um, where I could really flesh that character out and fills all of our character work character work character work and i think without him um i wouldn't have been able to to really build on what is working for me now mm, absolutely yeah and, and the faction you're referring to is is uh, uh g6 that's right isn't it um, yeah it or, is or, or, or yeah. was g6 but we'll talk about that uh, a bit later on and maybe you can fill us in on what happened there but I, I was gonna kind of touch on your your kind of promo skills and some of the videos that are out there on your social media pages and they are very kind of dark and sinister and quite menacing and like you say very eloquent um, very kind of heelish, quite threatening in a way. But uh, mm. you know that that's certainly um, a, a style of promo that you've probably had to kind of do in front of the mirror a few times and develop. Uh, but when did you realise you kind of had um, a skill for doing promos like that? Because the most, you know, the biggest word I can give you, you, you know, they're very convincing um, as a promo, and I think that's what you want to get across as a as a as a wrestler when you're doing your promos. They're very convincing. But tell us about how that style developed for you, then, Kevin. Um, it was really just because I hated doing promos. Like I hated them. I'm so self-conscious. Um, so I didn't do any of the mirror work at all. Um, I, I just, I hate looking at myself in the mirror. I hate making a silly fit because I'll just make myself laugh. Mm. That's the thing. So, um, so what I always try and do is try not to look. Um, I always just try to look straight down the camera if, because I was originally filming them on my phone. Um, and you can kind of see myself. So I just try and look straight in the camera. And I'd get notes from the promoter and I'd just try and go, right, okay, well, I can probably build this in my own way. But I'd go back and I'd look at um, really great promo uh, deliverers like Punk is one of the best yeah. ever at delivering a promo. Um, Paul Heyman is probably the best promo ever. Um, and uh, one of our own, Jimmy Havoc, is a fantastic promo. So I remember listening to a podcast with Jimmy Havoc and talking about if you're trying to get sinister over rather than um, rather than a like a big brute almost, the best thing to go is to go really quiet mm. and use those dynamics. Much like in music, it's all dynamics. So it's like right, okay. So if I try and just practice my cadence, I think I'm going to get it. So I did that first promo when we started with uh, with G6. And I was like, right, really focusing on that cadence. And I sent it over and went, oh, okay, you've got this now. And I was like, right, yeah. cool. I think I can do this. If you just give me what I need, like a rough idea as to what you want, I'll be able to deliver. 
Yeah, no, I absolutely love your promo work and definitely one thing that really stands out when you kind of uh, go through your social media. But uh, we've already mentioned CPW. It's definitely one company that you're closely associated to over in Coventry. So you made your CPW debut in February last year, I understand. And and very quickly you became, uh, you know, one of their, um, you you used regularly on every single show. You became one of their big names and very quickly you, you kind of fell into the title picture as well over in cpw and you had a, a heated rivalry with will star you actually yeah. managed to uh dethrone uh will star as their cpw undisputed heavyweight champion in about may of 2019 and okay, uh, so it wasn't the um it wasn't the undisputed heavyweight oh was it not it was okay no it was just the heavyweight championship so there's two uh, um, there's two top titles at cpw one's the lineal heavyweight championship um, and that is the top, top prize. So Will is still yeah. the lineal heavyweight champion, but I took the heavyweight championship from him. I understand. Uh, OK, so apologies for that. A bit of confusion there. But, That's uh, cool. You, no, it's you, cool. You, this was an ODQ match and you actually lost the match originally when it was one on one. And then the match got restarted, didn't it? Where your faction uh, got involved and it became a handicap match, which you, yeah. you managed to win with a, a crucifix bomb in the end. You, you covered Will and, uh, you know, on the second time of asking, you actually got the got the three count, you got the, the win and you became their heavyweight champion. So talk us through that storyline, your your rivalry with, uh, with Will Starr and, uh, you know, talk us uh, through the ending of that match through to becoming the, the new champion. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy because that was like my fourth show with CPW, um, and and I didn't think that that would happen uh, at all. It was it was a really humbling moment to be honest. Mm. Um, getting the news that you the, they're going to put the belt on you and they're going to do it in this way, and it was it was it was it was yeah it was really weird. Um, but I came back. It was like I had the first two shows with uh, with Cod Pro as a babyface. Like I said, it didn't work out. I came back, did the promo. We started G6, and the idea was um, that the general manager of the promotion at the time, uh, Dominic DeWinder, he, while Mr. Richards, um, who's the the promoter, but he's also a wrestler while he was away, um, he was going to take over in in a coup. And he got six young guys. I use young in inverted commas because I'm 30 in a couple of weeks. (laughs) but six young guys to the audience um, who are going to take over and become the new stars, whether the crowd like it or not. Um, and it was G6 because it was Genesis, the rebirth, and there were six of us, which is quite simple. Um, so, yeah, that, that got really hot very quick, uh, especially because we started with Will, uh, who was um, was the champion. Uh, he, you know, he has the, um, the moniker of the chosen one. Will is one of the best wrestlers I've ever been in there with. He's unbelievably talented. It, you you come away from a match with Will and you just go, that's how it should be. Everything's so yeah. crisp, so smooth. Um, the way he calls stuff to you, the way he um, sort of uh, does everything is like second... Look, wrestling's like second nature to him. It's almost like wrestling water at times. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, the finish got a lot of heat uh, because there was a spot in the match where I took the referee out and started whipping him with a belt before he got the finish. But that really got them riled up. And then he hit me with his big elbow and won. And then when Dominic came out to say that uh, he is the general manager, he owns the company, he can do whatever he likes. The screw finish was just perfect. Uh, Everything just fell perfectly. It was, it was just one of those moments where you come out and you go, we did something quite special there, quite special. Yeah, and, and turning you into the biggest heel in the company, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it, it certainly helped push me towards it. it. Certainly helped push me towards it. I, I don't think I'm quite there yet, but I would like to hope that I'm definitely in the conversation if anyone asks. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you, we mentioned about your faction, uh, G6, um, but uh, there was a, a match, wasn't there, where you lost to Mr. Richardson, his, his wrestling mafia in October, uh, bringing an yeah. end to the group. Uh, so this this was a really fascinating, really good storyline. Um, but uh, did the end of the G6 faction allow you to focus more on your singles career from then onwards? Absolutely. So um, what it really did was help me flesh out the character even more. Um, so I used the death of the faction as a way of saying that they weren't committed to the cause enough, which is where the more cult leader-esque promos started coming from even more. 
so that just allowed me to go even further into this into this realm um and yeah just really push on that singles run i've had a few tag matches in between uh at cpw as well but the the singles matches are where i feel that the character is more in keeping of um but yeah i lost the i lost the title uh sort of only a few months after that because i had to take some time out with another back injury which really derailed my sort of my momentum for a little while there i was about for about two and a half months with another back injury um, so I went and lost the title to, uh, to Niall Fairchild, who's one of their, again, one of their homegrown talents. Um, and then, and then spent a little bit of time, uh, on the sidelines and hit my life. And then, yeah, uh, I was going to touch on the injury, Kevin, and, and you was out for a couple of months, weren't you? I think it happened in June. You was back in about August. Um, but, uh, you know, did you get flashbacks to when you had that, uh, you know, when you sat up from the bench at uh, the uni grounds, you know, yeah. 10 years earlier or whatever? And, and did you think, you know, it's happening again? Yeah, there was a little bit of that. Um, so I was at training one night and I was just doing rolls. Uh, it was an open session down at the um, down at the training centre. And I was just rolling in the ring and I was just like, my shoulder doesn't feel good. Like, it doesn't feel right. Um, something's a bit off. And I, and I got home and I was like, it's really, like, warm. Like, everything's really hot, like, yeah. all around there. And and I got up the next morning and I turned my head to the right to check my, um, to check my, my phone for the time. And my whole back just seized up. And I actually fell out of bed um, just in agony from from sort of the base of my neck all the way down to the to the bottom of my back on the right hand side it was like this isn't good this isn't good at all um so i went to the doctor and they were like yeah it's it's um it's a it's a mixture of things uh you've got acute tendonitis in your shoulder and um you have uh, multiple spasms all the way down your back and i'm like oh great fantastic so i spent sort of two and a half three months getting um a lot of osteopathy um a lot of anti-inflammatory drugs and uh yoga and that really helped but i was it was it was a moment where i was like i'm not getting any younger i'm going to be 30 next year mm. is if this doesn't clear up then i might have to knock this on the head just as it's really starting again and that was that wasn't fun it was just my my girlfriend was an absolute an absolute saint putting up with me at that time because I was miserable. I was just wandering around the house, moping around the house, and she was like, "You need to get out." I'm like, "Yeah, I do. I need to go because I just couldn't be in the house on my own or you know around anyone because I was just really upset and angry." And then it started getting better and getting better, and luckily I came back and was putting a couple of tag matches took a few bumps and was went no i'm fine i'm good i can go and everything's okay so that's touch wood you've been fine ever since but uh yeah uh, let, let's talk about some some iwe talent then because uh you know a couple of wrestlers that you know very well um uh, one in in xander um and frankie yep. t so now, now you wrestled frankie t and xander the very same day in april last year you fought frankie in the semi-final of the gbwa pure championship tournament uh, what, what was mm-hmm. it like to be in the ring during that match with frankie was that the first time that you two you know a, a, a touched in the ring or uh, had you wrestled him before give give us your kind of experience on uh, your your match with frankie during that match so we'd never locked up before um frankie i met frankie at pwa when he came with john uh, with johnny royal um mm. and it was announced that we were going to have this match i was like yeah that's cool um and because it was for the uh for sort of like the pure wrestling championship or the i can't even remember the name you've just said it and it's gone from my head um yeah, gbwa we... <laughs> i think it is just, yeah yeah great yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, we just kept it really simple. I was like, you know what, let's just call it out there. Um, you've been doing this long enough. I've been doing this long enough. Let's just lock up and just call it out there and we'll see what we get. And it was, it was pretty cool. You know, there's a couple of little bits where, you know, miscommunications and whatever, but, um, it went really well, uh, from what I, from what I remember, uh, again, Frankie's really easy to work. Um, he doesn't do anything, uh, that would be considered reckless, which is, which is nice. Um, uh, and it, you know, especially if you're friendly with someone, you're always trying to like get in their ear and make them laugh and break character. So that was quite fun. 
Yeah, and then the very same day at uh, you made your IWE or your official IWE debut against Xander at their uh, Resurrection show. This is April the thirteenth last year, of course, and uh, you know. We, we've had Xander on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. He was the first um, IW talent that we've interviewed. Uh, tell us about yeah, your I remember listening to that episode. Yeah, tell us about your experience with, with the Goth Daddy then, and uh, your IWE debut. And uh, having known uh, John and, and Frankie beforehand, it must have been uh, a really good experience debuting for IWE. It was really great. Um, so uh, I'll get into a little bit of that before the match. But uh, the locker room is so nice to be around. Like it was one of the most pleasant experiences I've ever been in the locker room. Everyone was so friendly. They really created this this really fun atmosphere to be around. It's it's just one of those places I always think about. I've got to go back down and work there because those guys are so nice and it's just relaxed. I've never been in a locker room I, until like recently. I've just never been in a in a locker room like that. So that was yeah. that was really lovely. Um, yeah, Xander is legit, man. Like he is legit. I, I remember going in there and I was like, yeah, this guy can go, I really go. Um, he's been trained incredibly well. Everything he does is so crisp, so smooth, um, and he's young as well, like really young. And so it's gonna—he's gonna have a really good career if he sticks at it. I know he had that like awful injury um, yeah. last year, but um, yeah, he's—he's he's definitely one who's gonna—you're gonna be seeing a lot more of him over over the next couple of years. Because it was just one of the like we we had a lot of um, we don't we'd only met the, for the first time that day, and the match was two two matches after uh, my match with Frankie. So I went out with the match with Frankie, then there was a match, and then it was us. So I had to come back, finish calling the other match, and then come back out again. Um, so that was an experience, um, but he just made it all all worth it. Uh, bit me really hard in the hand though, so I owe you one for that, but. But uh, yeah, but other than that, no, it was, it was it was really easy, really really easy. I'd work him, you know, every day and twice on Sundays. Yeah, there we go. But uh, no, an excellent talent. Uh, uh, but uh, skipping back to CPW very very briefly, and uh, I think they're mm-hmm. one of their last matches of 2019 was their Xmas Tidings show. Now this is where you had um, a- another match um, inside a cage this time, the, the CPW Prison against Will Star. Um, I, th- I think, if I'm not mistaken, the championship was on the line once again. Um, but uh, was this your first cage match, Kevin? And uh, you know, Will Star, obviously one of your big biggest rivals uh, to date in your in your wrestling career. Um, tell us about this experience. We, we spoke a bit off air about how the cage match was pretty hard. It took a while to recover. Uh, but what was your experience like uh, wrestling Will Star inside uh, the CPW prison? Um, so it wasn't for the title. It was um, it was just a singles match. So the story right. going the story going on at the time was that uh, Morris was challenging Will at the big. Uh, Christmas, the Xmas Bash show uh, for the lineal championship because he had uh, the golden ticket and it was a pick your poison so it was uh, Morris had picked uh, me as Will's opponent in the cage in an effort to soften him up for the match a couple of weeks later um, at, the, at the big end of year show um, that thing hurts man that thing really hurts uh, it's one of the, it's not one of the um, the newer cages with the with the mesh wire. It's one of the old style cages with the big bars. So if you go into it, it just sucks. Um, it was the first time I've ever done it. Uh, definitely would do it again. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun and um, and it's incredibly creative as well. You've got to be incredibly creative because it sits on the apron. So there's not you can't really use the ropes too much because there's no there's no give so you've got to be really creative with the space and um the only thing i would say is don't take a bump off it because i did that and it really hurt it really really (laughs) hurt bumping 12 foot off the side of the off the side of the cage into the ring sucks so bad i'm still feeling it it's so bad yeah but no it was great i mean but uh uh but yeah, Will's Will's an absolute pleasure to work. You know, again, like I said before, he's so fluid and smooth. Um, so it was not never a problem working well. Uh, he actually trained. He's actually uh, the trainer, head trainer at um, at Cov Pro. Um, so I've had a chance to train under him as well. So we we you know we have that sort of rapport 
uh, going into it. But the um, my God, that cage hurts. That's that's pretty much all I can say. It hurts so much. There we go. But uh, skip it, skipping forward, uh, uh, well, to I, IWE again, uh, then, Kevin. So their next show is on the 22nd of February, so in about yep, three yep. weeks' time. And, and there's a, a tag team tournament, isn't there, um, to, to crown? The, is it the first or the next IWE tag team champions? And uh, It's the um, first. Yes. It's the first, yeah. And uh, it's going to be part of their Gold Diggers show on the 22nd of February. Now, uh, um, there's going to be some really good talent. In it. There's four awesome teams that are involved. Uh, you've got the Bone Brothers. Uh, you've got uh, yep. Good Goth Almighty, which is obviously Xander and Frankie T uh, teaming up there. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, Maverick Blade, who was the second of our IWE interviews, teaming up with uh, Kit Knox. Um, and you're going to be in it as well. Um, so um, uh, yeah. you're going to be in it, in it with with Johnny Royal, of course, aren't you? So he's going to be your tag I'm team not, partner. I'm, I'm not, unfortunately. Um, Johnny's, oh, you're not? Johnny's taking a break. No, Johnny's, unfortunately, he's taking a break from the business. Um, ah. He's He's got some personal issues going on, and I love that boy, uh, and I hope he's... I hope he's okay. Uh, so I keep in contact with him every now and again, but no, he's he's taking some time away. Um, so that's taking so you out I, the tournament, I'm guessing. No, I'm still in the tournament. I'll be teaming with uh, with Man of Steel, um, yeah. and our first round match is against the Bone Brothers, and they are beefy boys. Uh, they are big yeah. lads, and I've seen some of their stuff, and they are again, they are legit. So it's going to be a really um, fun, I imagine, very physical, very physical match. Yeah. But yeah, and no, so it's, it's. I was going to ask, what, what, how do you see your chances? But you've already explained that it's going to be a really physical, hard hitting match. So uh, it's obviously a match you're looking forward to, but uh, not not necessarily in terms of the bumps and the the bruises you yeah. might take <laughs> during that one. It is. I think if we can get through, I think if we can get through, because I've um, I've never teamed with Man of Steel before, but I've seen his, his stuff. Again, he's he's a great talent. Uh, so I couldn't ask for a better replacement. Um, if we can get through the first round, I think we got a really good chance. Um, good. I haven't wrestled, you know. If we if we end up meeting Good Goth Almighty in the final, um, I've wrestled both Frankie and Xander, so I know what they're about. Um, if you know, if it comes to Maverick and Kit Knox, I'm sure we'll you know we'll find a way to go through. Um, but it's all about getting through that first round, and it's one of those where you can't take those boys lightly. I mean, they're winning tag team championships left and right, absolutely yeah. left, right, and center. Um, so it's you know. It's going to be a fun match, but one that is going to be very, very physical. Indeed. And uh, as I mentioned, that's going to be on the 22nd of February at IWE's uh, tag team tournament, the they Gold Diggers show. And tickets are still available, I understand, at uh, iweuk.bigcartel.com. Uh, so make sure that uh, the link to that is in the description to this interview. Yeah, uh, come, come, down, come down and celebrate my birthday. That'll be oh, great because right. it's my birthday. It's it's my birthday a few days before then. It's my it'll be my thirtieth birthday. It'll be the first match of my thirties. So if you're in if you're in the area, please come down. Um, don't buy me a drink because I have to work. But afterwards, <laughs> hopefully we'll there'll be a double celebration then. Hopefully there'll uh, be a absolutely. double celebration. <laughs> absolutely. Um, last couple of questions, then Kevin. Last couple of questions. And well, what's the biggest piece of advice that you've been given since you started as a pro wrestler? The biggest piece of advice that you've been given that's helped you in your career so far. Um, it's a, it's a fairly recent piece of advice. So we were very lucky at CPW to have, um, a seminar with Flash Morgan Webster. And I asked him what the best piece of advice he ever received was. And it was from, uh, from Spud to him and then to, from him to everyone else. And it was, um, compete with others. You get better, compete with yourself. You get better. So always look at what you're doing and try and make yourself better and don't worry about what everyone else is doing and don't compare yourself to them because you are your own, you are your, you know, your own self, you know yourself better than anybody else. And it's only you that you can improve on. You can't always play chase up to the next person that you think is above you because your time will come if you put the work in. Yeah, some great advice there. Some great advice. Uh, but that pretty much draws us to the end of uh, this interview then, Kevin, and uh, this episode of the Wrestling With Jonas podcast. But we can't let you go without giving you an opportunity to throw out some plugs as far as anything you want to promote on the show, any uh, social media handles where my listeners can get hold of you, say hi, find out more about you and uh, where you're going to be wrestling in the future. So, uh, yeah, the floor is yours if you want to kind of throw out any plugs or any, any handles in these final few minutes. 
That's great. So uh, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Isaac Colt One, uh, on Instagram at Kevin Isaac Wrestling, all lowercase one word. And please follow my clothing line at Hopespot CC on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're a wrestling based uh, streetwear um, brand. Uh, we sell t shirts, hoodies, hats, and 50% of all of the profits go direct to a selection of charities. Um, that we have uh, chosen based on our affiliates. Uh, so we've got a couple of affiliated athletes. Um, there's some really great guys you should go and check out. Uh, Alex Cupid, Lucia Lee, Kieran Young, Morgan Black, and of course we're affiliated with IWE. Um, so we're going to be down there having a presence. Uh, everything we sell in our range um, will be donated, 50% will be donated to the Mind Charity at that event. So come and say hi to us on the table. Um, we'll, we'll have a presence down there as well. Um, and yeah, and you can check out our new website at www.hopespotcc.com. Awesome stuff. Well, uh, thank you, Kevin, for being a part of this uh, special interview, uh, episode 101. It wasn't quite room 101 for you. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but... Uh, but uh, no, the only <laughs> thing I'm putting down, the only thing I'm putting down in room 101 is that stupid announcement for my first ever match. That can go right down there with everything there else that's go. been put in. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for being a, a, a very special guest on this um, uh, episode uh, 101. But there we go. No, great speaking to you. But we look forward to doing even more interviews uh, in partnership with IWUK in the future. So stay tuned for those. Uh, in the meantime, please keep it tuned to, to the Wrestling Majonis podcast for all of your weekly NXT, uh, AEW, WWE, sorry, NXT UK updates. We cover so many promotions on every single episode. And if you've enjoyed listening to this episode, uh, please don't forget to spread the word. Tell your friends and tell your family. Don't forget to spread the word. Don't forget to subscribe to the Wrestling Majonis podcast on all popular podcast platforms so you don't miss out on a single episode. And uh, let's say enjoy your week. Uh, thank you very much to Kevin. And and uh, don't forget to visit our website as well. We're at WrestlingWithJohnners.com. We can find Wrestling With Johnners all in one place. That's WrestlingWithJohnners.com. But in the meantime, thanks for listening. And we'll catch up with you all again very soon. Bye.